but nah. <laughs> more moments, one second. And Scythian State just says you're so terrific. So that was a good picture of you. <laughs> but nah. <laughs> mm. All right, Neil, you may begin whenever you are ready. All right, good evening. Welcome to the April 4th, 2023 meeting of the CB6 Environment and Parks Committee. My name is Neil Barkley and I am the chair of the committee. Tonight we are joined by District Manager Jesus Perez. This meeting is called to order at 7.05 p.m. As a reminder, New York State law now requires all community board members to have their cameras on and their first and last names displayed from the time the meeting is called to order until the meeting is adjourned. If your camera is not on and your name not properly displayed, you cannot count towards forum. Members of the public, you can raise any questions or comments that you have through the Q&A feature of Zoom. If there is time following the committee's discussion, we will field questions from the public. And this evening, um, Ann Siegelman is kind enough to take the minute. So thank you very much, Ann. To add, um, everyone should have received an email from the board office with a link to a doodle sign up sheet for minute takers at your committee meetings in 2023. For your convenience, the link to the sign up sheet is being posted in the chat right now. And we will now take attendance by roll call. Jesus will conduct the roll call. Good evening, everyone. Um, I will call your name and you will unmute yourselves. When your name is called, please say present. And then I will make the official announcement if we have quorum. All right, Neil Barkley. Present. Thank you. Martin Barrett. Present. Thank you. Claire Brennan. Clara Brennan. I'm not hearing anything. Paige Judge. Paige Judge. Moving on, Anton Molnar. Present. Thank you. Raj Nayar. Raj Nayar. Okay, I'm not hearing anything. Reshma Patel. Present. Thank you. Anne Seligman. Here. Thank you. Letty Simon is excused. Mark Thompson. Present. Thank you. <laughs> Mara Wong is excused. With six members out of 11 present, we do have quorum. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, she's here. I'll, now I'll mute myself. Thank you. Okay. The agenda for tonight's meeting was distributed ahead of time by the board office and appears on the screen before you. If there is no objection, we will adopt the agenda as stated. Members of the committee, if you object to adopting the agenda, you may raise your hand through Zoom. Seeing no objections, the agenda for tonight's meeting is adopted. The minutes from the March 7th meeting were distributed ahead of time. If there is no objection, we will adopt these minutes as drafted. Members of the committee, if you object to adopting these minutes, you may raise your hand through Zoom. Seeing no objections, the minutes from the March 7th meeting are adopted and will soon be available on the CB6 website. So, just to set some ground rules in order to conduct an efficient meeting, let's observe these ground rules. One, no one may speak until the floor is, no one may speak until granted the floor. Two, committee members, if you have a question about committee business or wish to make a motion, please raise your hand through Zoom. Three, the chat function should not be used for committee business or questions about agenda topics. All such remarks should be made on the record by raising your hand through Zoom. Chat should only be used to alert us to any technical difficulties you are having or to state in writing information like an email address that was already stated aloud on the record during the meeting. Number four, 
When a committee member is given the floor to speak, I will identify you and you can unmute yourself so that you can speak. Number five, committee members are required by the state open meetings law to have their Zoom cameras on and your first and last name displayed during tonight's entire meeting from call to order to adjournment. If you must step away from your computer briefly, you are required to leave your camera on. And the order of the adopted agenda should be as followed, which was um, given out ahead of time. And uh, so, okay, I think we could just uh, begin with the agenda then. Neil, one more thing before you begin. Um, Paige, are you here? I think I saw you among the members of the public, so we promoted you to panelist. Are you in fact here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. That the All right, thanks for joining us, Paige. All right. All right, so we have tonight's agenda. First, I would just like to thank everyone on the committee for helping out uh, with the resolution. And uh, we had a resolution passed last month and hopefully the first of many. So thank you everyone for helping out with that one. And starting with tonight's agenda, we have number one, a presentation on the temporary installation of nine sculptures. Um, along Park Avenue malls between 34th and 38th Street. And I believe uh, will uh, Carol Furman, is, uh, is she here? So, hi, um, I'm Elizabeth Massell. I'm presenting on behalf of NYC Parks. Um, okay. And I'm also joined by, um, I see John Harari and Victoria Spagnola from the Patrons of Park Avenue, as well as Emmanuel uh, Olivas from Galleries Bar 2. Um, so I'll just start with a very brief um, overview of the Art in the Parks program. I think many of you are familiar with what we do, um, but just because I see some new faces here, I'll just share a little bit of information about this program at NYC Parks, and then I'll turn it over um, to Emmanuel to share some visuals and information about um, this upcoming exhibition. Um, so the Art in the Parks program is um, a program run by the NYC Parks Department. I am currently the only staff member at the Parks Department um, permitting temporary public art in parks citywide. Uh, we permit a variety of projects from murals to monumental sculpture, um, fence installations. We work with art institutions, galleries, individual artists, community groups. Um, to permit temporary public art. Um, temporary public art can be on view for up to one year. Um, many projects are on view, um, you know, typically around the six month range. Um, some notable locations where we have done public art in this district uh, is Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza. We have a long running, um, that's been a long running location for public art. Um, we also had an exhibition um, at this site that we're here to talk about tonight on Park Avenue. Uh, between 34th and 38th streets. Uh, last year's was by Idris B. It was a series of colorful uh, geometric animal sculptures. Um, and just some other nuts and bolts of our program. Um, we don't receive any funding from the city. So all projects, um, all temporary public art projects are funded uh, by the exhibitor. Um, and they cover all aspects of installation um, including site preparation, site restoration, transport, installation, maintenance, et cetera. Um, our public art exhibitors are required to maintain the artworks, um, address any issues that might arise. Um, and I'm happy to answer any qu general questions afterwards, any questions you have about our program, but that's in a nutshell. Um, so this exhibition that we're here to share information with you tonight uh, will be installed later this month. Uh, the dates are a little bit TBD while we figure out um, just some last minute logistical um, things. Because this site is over the vehicular tunnel, we are also, um, we share with the DOT Bridges team to review the exhibition to make sure there will be no structural concerns. Um, the exhibition will be on view through December. Um, nine sculptures by artist Carol Fuhrman um, from 34th to 38th Streets. Um, and I guess I'll turn it over to Emmanuel to share some information about the artworks and the artist um, 
and we have some visuals to share with you as well. Hi guys, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Fantastic. Well, first of all, thank you so much on behalf of uh, Gallery Spark 2 uh, team. We're very, very excited for this exhibition. Um, I want to share with you a little bit about the artist uh, and also tell you a little bit about our gallery. We're a French-based gallery based, uh, our central location will be in Paris, uh, 20 galleries worldwide. And of course we have our gallery here in New York. Uh, we're located in Central Park South. So not very far from Park Avenue. Uh, again, thank you so much, Elizabeth and, and Victoria, John for, for allowing us to do this exhibition. The artists cannot wait to, to have the artworks out. I wanna share uh, my screen here so I can show you uh, more of the layout of what we're looking at as far as as the exhibition will be. I'm okay to share the screen, correct? Yes, you are. Okay, fantastic. Give me one second here. Second. So it looks like it's now, could you pull it up, Elizabeth? It's not allowing me to do it. It's telling me to log out of the. Um, yes, I'm, I'll am i share it and you just tell me when you want um, I guess. to advance so this, this slide. All right, fantastic. So this is one of the pieces from Carol Fearman. Carol Fearman, you know, again, I'll tell you a little bit about the gallery. Uh, we're a French-based gallery. We represent over 60 artists worldwide, a lot of new generation artists, uh, a lot of contemporary artworks, uh, but as well as masters, uh, Carol Fearman being one of them. She is based out of New York City. Uh, she works out of her studio here in Brooklyn and house foundries throughout the country as well as overseas. Uh, this piece you see is one of the pieces that we will be exhibiting different color variation. Uh, you can go on to the next one, Elizabeth. A little bit of an intro about, you know, the, the exhibition and why we're choosing Park Avenue. Of course, Park Avenue has the best locations for us to showcase some of her works. Uh, these are monumental pieces. So we're talking uh, artworks that go up to 15 feet tall um, on top of pedestals all constructed out of resin as well as bronze. Uh, here you can see the exhibition map. Uh, we have the nine pieces. Uh, majority of them are gonna be facing each other, just like the exhibition that was previously there. We're gonna open up with number one, which is the next slide. You can go on to the next one, perfect. So this is one of the pieces, uh, you can go back one more. Thank you so much. So this is the first uh, piece. It's gonna be located on 38th Street. It's a bronze piece, stands at around 12 feet tall on top of a pedestal. This piece is currently making its way here to New York. It should be arriving by the end of the week. Uh, next one. So this is uh, Brooke with Beach Bowl. This is the epitome of what Carol Fearman is known for. Uh, she's a hyper-realist sculptor. She works with resin again, uh, you know, considered to be one of the top three in the world as far as making artworks that look as close as possible to, uh, to a human being. It doesn't look like a wax figure. It's truly, every detail is, is, is incredible. And this one is one of those pieces that truly exudes everything that she's known for. Again, this is a monumental piece. So the width of it is around six feet tall, um, and then and the height will be you know forty five uh, inches and in, in, in tall. Next one. This is another piece we're going to be exhibiting. It's going to be facing Brookwood Beach Ball. This is going to be a life-size work. It's not considered to be a monumental. Therefore, we're going to be elevating her on a taller pedestal. So again, the measurements, everything will be exactly as the subject that she used. Uh, this is really going to be one of those pieces that people that are crossing the street will stop by and, and look at. It's one of the only ones, I believe, in this whole series that will be a life-size scale. Next one. 
This is uh, the one that we're mostly excited for. This piece is actually making its way from Tokyo. Uh, the sphere was uh, was on exhibit out there. We're thinking it's going to be sort of the Anish Kapoor uh, piece uh, being in, in Park Avenue. Uh, it's uh, exhibiting, you know, this incredible sphere, stainless steel sphere with uh, a life-size uh, girl balancing on top of it. But again, the, the look of this piece is just gonna be incredible, especially in that particular location, reflecting all of the buildings around. Um, and depending on the daylight will be, you know, will take on its whole new level uh, uh, throughout the day. New York City Slicker. This is a piece that Kara Fearman, of course, had to show here. This is going to be located on 36th Street. Um, you know, the epitome of just walking around New York City starts raining. She wanted to capture this piece again, as you see it. This is going to be a monumental one. So it's going to be larger than life again on top of a of a podium. So it's just going to take on a, a bigger scale once you're standing in front of it. This one, Survival of Serena, she did a version of this a few years ago, about 11 years ago, that uh, I believe, Elizabeth, you, you helped her as well during the, the exhibition she did. It was only one piece that she exhibited uh, uh, over 10 years ago. This is a whole new version of that piece. Uh, this is going to be quite special because it's going to be... Uh, you know, completely embellished in Swarovski crystals, the whole cap, again, daylight, it's going to look phenomenal and a very, very large piece. This is not a life size. This is also a monumental work. BB on the ball will be slightly bigger than life, uh, not necessarily a monumental, but again, looking at the way that it's going to be displayed on top of a pedestal and a big beach ball, uh, she's going to look quite a, a, a towering as you, as you walk by. The Quan, this is one of her most, you know, iconic pieces. Of course, we have to have it. And like Justice with that very cool sphere, that's also going to be exhibiting this very cool reflective uh, sphere in which the, the subject is balancing on. This is a life-size piece, uh, but again, with the sphere, it will look more grand once you see it. Uh, you can see some of the uh, simulations that we did to give you sort of an idea what it would look like once it's uh, on display. And then we're going to close out the show on 34th uh, with the Golden Mean. It's, it's an incredible, incredible piece. Uh, this is a monumental, so it stands around 17 feet tall on top of a pedestal. This is a bronze piece. Incredibly elegant. It's going to look phenomenal to open up, again, the exhibition as people walk by on 34th and make their way up uh, uh, Park Avenue. Again, this is a little bit more about Kara Fearman. As I mentioned, she is truly considered to be one of the top three hyper-realist sculptors in the world. Uh, in fact, she was one of the pioneers that started the movement uh, back in the 70s. So she's, has a, she's got a good fair of, a, of incredible exhibitions throughout the world, but we're actually the first time that we're exhibiting this large scale exhibition here in New York, even though she lives here, she's done one or two pieces that she's exhibited publicly, but this is the first time that we are going to be doing uh, nine monumental pieces uh, publicly here in New York and also up until December. So it's going to be a very long exhibition that we have no doubt a lot of people are going to enjoy. I think there's just a few, a couple last yeah, slides. This, uh, the last, uh, again, you know, Galleries Part 2, we're very, very happy, again, on behalf of uh, the whole team. We, we cannot wait to uh, make this exhibition happen. Along with that, we're going to do a uh, solo exhibition for her, which will inaugurate at the same time that the public exhibition will be. So this will be a great time for any of the people that are visiting our gallery to come to Park Avenue and look at these works. Uh, this is, again, going to be a solo Solo exhibition for her. So if you, any of you haven't had a chance to come and look at our location here in Central Park South, I, I highly recommend. Uh, right now we're showing 17 different modern contemporary artists, but during the next six months, it's all about Carol Fearman in correlation to the Park Avenue exhibition. Uh, it's going to be an immersive show. Again, April 27 will be the opening. So we'll do the inauguration for her in Park Avenue, but also have a, you know, an incredible opening for her. The art and everyone from her team in Brooklyn will be here. Uh, and we cannot wait, of course, we cannot wait to see all of you guys there. Um, I think that's it. That's it. 
Uh, I, I would just like to say this, uh, this all looks great. And um, perhaps we'll have the opportunity to uh, come visit the museum. So yes. Marty has a question. Um, how, sorry, did you, how did you choose which piece in which location? So it was, it was definitely hard. Uh, you know, she's been doing this for the majority of her life. Uh, but we definitely went back into looking at her, you know, portfolio and obviously working directly with the artist to choose which pieces she wanted to exhibit. Some pieces that, you know, are recognized worldwide by, uh, by the public, people that, you know, the second they see the work, whether they're driving by or they're walking by, they recognize that it's Carol Fearman's. And that's the reason why we're choosing some monumental as well as life-size works. Um, in the gallery here, will we be, I believe we're going to be doing six life-size pieces and in fact two of them will be specially made for the exhibition so it was just the teamwork working you know with our team and friends uh, but mostly with the artist with Carol you know she's very in tune with everything that she wants to exhibit uh, and particularly uh, uh, Justice which is one of the pieces that we'll have in, uh, in Park Avenue the one with the uh, with the sphere and the girl on top so uh, really excited. Does anyone have any other questions or comments? Um, I don't know if, if Victoria or John from the patrons of Park Avenue wanted to just say anything about the exhibition as um, their group is, uh, is helped bringing this through. Hi, this is Victoria Fuller. <laughs> I just wanted to thank Carol Furman and the Gallery Bordeaux for having such a beautiful display. We're very lucky to have them display their artwork. And I think it's going to be awesome for the community. John, do you want to say anything? Yeah, I, this is, you know, this is our second ever year of doing this. Uh, Victoria and I have been leading uh, the Patrons of the Park Avenue, which helps to manage and beautify the malls on Park Avenue and Murray Hill. And we're very excited. I think the Idris B was a home run. And I think that this is a very, very nice compliment. And I... I do think, uh, you know, selfishly, but also I, I actually do objectively think that this is, and Elizabeth, obviously you oversee many installations. I, I do think that this is probably like one of the best in New York, if not maybe even around the world. Uh, we just have such a unique spot on Park Avenue and it's just an amazing collection of uh, sculptures that all tell a story and it's an amazing way to present uh, public art in New York. Okay, I see Jesus. Hi, thank you. Uh, just some quick logistical questions that, to, just to reconfirm. Uh, these installations will be put up by the end of the month or towards the end of the month, or is that still being uh, by the end, I would say by the end of April. Okay, by the end of the, uh, of the month. And they'll be up until, did I hear December? Yes. Okay. All right, and just a question, does the Parks Department do like a press release or something when these things come out or offer little images that we could perhaps put in the newsletter in case we want to direct people that direction? Uh, yeah, we can, sh we can share that information. Usually the exhibitors that we work with, the Parks Press Office doesn't send out a press release, but um, we can make sure I don't want to speak for Emmanuel in the gallery, but yes, um, we actually we just received the press release. Uh, again, we have all of our uh, public relations and marketing communications team in France. Uh, we just received about you know thirty minutes before I joined the 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 meeting the uh, press release uh, that I will be sending also over to you, Elizabeth. So you can share with everyone else as well. Um, it'll have the list of every piece that we're going to be exhibiting, as well as the invitation. Uh, in correlation to public exhibition in Park Avenue to the solo exhibition here in the gallery. Great, thank you. And I also see you have your hand up. I do. Um, I think this looks beautiful. Um, and I believe there is a, a request for a rezzo in support of this installation. Is that correct? Is this um, informational? No. Yeah, we usually come for informational purposes. Right. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna make a motion to in of support of a rezo if one was needed. I'm new to the committee, so 
if you if you all want to offer one, you may have. I think actually this community board may have done that in the past, and we're always happy to have that. Um, if that is something that you would all like to. Yeah, well, I I can ask the you know, the committee what they think, but my understanding is, as you said, that it's uh, informational and it's. Um, just something that's done to present it to the committee so that the community knows. Now, Jesus, that's correct, right? That's what. Yeah, they, they don't really need the resume. If you have time to write one and you want to spend it that way, you may, but they don't need it. Nope, okay. not, not me, but it is beautiful. I look forward to walking by. And, and you can't say a resume and you support it and not volunteer to write it. That's, that's not allowed. <laughs> Nailed. <laughs> But um, no, Neil, I'm already doing the minutes. Well, you know, we're you're on a roll. If somebody wants, if somebody wants to do the minutes, and I'll write the resume. No, no, we're okay. But thank you, Ann. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Emmanuel. Yes, tell me. Oh, your your hand is up. So I didn't. Yes. No. I. I mean, again, just kind of want to go over everything. Uh, of course, thank uh, all of you guys for having me here again on behalf. I wanted to have our team in France as well join, but time difference doesn't really allow us to do that. Uh, but uh, again, Elizabeth, thank you so much, Victoria and John. Uh, again, it's been a pleasure to be working with you guys and 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 all of you. I, I guarantee you, this is going to be one of the absolute best exhibitions that uh, New York City in general has seen. Uh, again having that in correlation with their exhibition here, it's gonna be such an amazing attraction to bounce the traffic back and forth, people that are visiting the gallery to go and visit uh, Park Avenue and vice versa, you know, to come to, to our gallery here. Um, and we will make sure to send all of the, uh, you know, press release and everything for you guys. And, and we cannot wait to see you here and also there. So uh, just a quick question. When does the exhibit begin at the museum? The exhibition is going to open on the 27th of April. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And we all look forward to seeing the artwork on uh, Park and hopefully at the museum as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. We will now go to number two on our agenda. And this one is about planting new trees in Manhattan Community Board 6 in our district. Um, I had sent out some, or uh, Brendan had um, sent out some maps um, that we use, or it's on um, the uh, NYC Parks uh, website. And um, I'm just wondering, did anyone have a chance to maybe look around or scroll through it? I see Mark is saying yes. Everyone. It's actually very cool. And I told a few different people about that who aren't on the community board. And they're like, what? That, what, what are you talking about? So there's a map and you can look and see where trees are, where they're going to be planted. So it's what a great tool. I love it. Yeah, it is. Uh, Paige? Paige? All right, we'll-, uh, we'll um, Hold on, I'm sorry. Okay. If you go out the back door at 40th and 1st Avenue from your building, we need trees on 40th Street, both sides of the street, both the north and south side of the street. We have complained about that for at least 30 years that I know about, probably 50 as long as I've lived here. So just go out the back door and look left and right and look across the street and you'll see we're lacking in trees. Okay. I've, I've, uh, I've made a note. Thank you, Paige. <coughs> All right, Anton. Yes. Thank you. I looked at the tree map and uh, I have a question. How often is this updated? Because it indicates a tree in front of my building that's no longer there. Sheena, you don't, you do not have to answer this at all. Would you have an idea of when it's updated? You could just say, no, I don't. And then we'll move along. But do you have an idea of when the map may be updated? I'm muted. Hello? Hello? Yes. Oh, you can hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. 
No, I don't. But I could find out for you. It's nothing to find out. Um, I'm going to text right now um, and see if I can get a quick answer. Okay. But I'm sure it's kind of frequent because it's it's a, it's constantly moving. So I'm sure it's kind of frequent. I'm going to text right now. Thank you so much. Reshma? So I was going to say this, and someone's actually said this in the Q&A as well, is um, one, I thought it was cool that they had the tree map, but also um, Councilwoman Rivera had a training today for people who'd want to help plant trees. And um, I mean, that unfortunately kind of coincided with this meeting, but there might be more of those in the future for anyone who wants to volunteer because they're looking for people to kind of help plant the trees uh, for the, you know, the new trees that um, the city is wanting to put in place. And um, it takes about um, three years, sometimes two years to get them. So I don't know how often it's updated. That's kind of the time frame for the tree. Yes. And um, Council Member Rivera, she also sent out an email about uh, um, I guess, uh, an event for Earth Day where people will go and survey um, trees in different parts of the district. So I would encourage everyone to have a look at that one. And I, I'll be uh, working on it um, a couple of different streets between 2nd Ave and 1st uh, Ave. So, and uh, Brendan, he also sent that um, announcement out. So everyone should have seen that one. Paige, you're, you're muted. I can't get the hand to disappear. Okay. Thank um, you. Okay. Uh, anyone else? So it looks like uh, looks like we have one question, I believe, from the public. One second. Well, um, I saw it already. It's from um, uh, Elisa, and it is about the amount of time that it takes to get a tree. And I think uh, Reshma also um, talked about that uh, or mentioned it about the amount of time that it can take um, over a year. I think what the situation is with uh, Ralph Bunch is that we are we're still waiting. The projected uh, time to receive that would actually be April. And so the committee's position is, as today is April the 4th, we will wait until the end of April. And then if we still have not received any trees, or at least an update, then that is something that we will follow up with. Does anyone have any comments on that? No? It looks no. like you might have a comment on that. Uh, no, I don't have a comment on that. Um, I just spoke um, spoke to our um, forestry unit. He said they they do not, he does not know. Um, you can contact 311 and they should be able to tell you. I guess the information is filtered through them. Um, that's what he, we, we both are thinking the same thing, but he doesn't get that information. Okay. Right. Um, so I think I think that question should be answered. And then we also had uh, shows upcoming. So. OK. Um, any other comments or questions about um, trees? Well, I think uh, just quickly, Mark, I think you was there anything that you wanted to add just generally? I, I know that um, you enjoy walking around the city and you notice um, anything that uh, you always have an update about our trees. So. Mark Thompson for the status of our trees. Yeah, just um, I mean, it, it's what's interesting, and I I started noticing all the green stickers in a, a while ago on the sidewalk that say a tree is going to be coming here. First one I saw was like what? It was on I think twentieth or twenty first off of second, I think. Um, but I've seen them all over the place, and some of them actually I've seen them pulled up and like you know they peeled off. I guess and been in the wrong spot. But it's amazing that the amount of activity that happened in the past maybe six months with, um, you know, trees that are going to be planted. And I think if you guys walk around, you're going to see the sidewalk, a lot of little L shapes designating parts of a sidewalk that are going to be removed for a tree to be planted. 
And in some cases, the sticker is on there, like a green sticker saying a tree is going to be planted here. So keep an eye out for all that stuff because it's the activity has really picked up. And you'll see that on the map on the, the website on parks, um, you know, what's coming up and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Um, so and, I'm, so I'm pleased by it. I mean, because when I was chair, we were trying to get all the stuff down. I know Marty remembers Paige. I know you did a bunch of stuff and Letty and then other people were like going crazy trying to get things done. And maybe it's just that our work finally paid off, but it's good to see it happening. So it's pretty nice. Mark, when you're walking around, do you see a lot of stumps? I've noticed a few. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know, um, a lot of them look old, but you know, during COVID, I don't know if things were, I don't think trees were cut down, but there, there's there been some damage, which is an issue that we have to keep in mind. Um, we need to protect our trees better. Um, that's one thing I'll be writing on our section. Uh, but there are a lot of beds that have just the, the stumps in there. Um, and these aren't really, really big old trees for the most part. A lot of them have, they're probably six, inch trees, maybe eight inch trees. Um, so I don't know if they were just damaged or some of them died. I know over near Stuyves in town, they planted a lot of trees on First Avenue and I think they were dead within the first season. That was years ago. Um, and, yeah, and the cherry trees, right? Um, you know, but all those trees have to get replaced. Um, and so then where them. where the stumps are there, I would imagine those are possible locations where we could request yeah. to have a new tree put in mm -hmm. so that's something yeah. to think about yeah. yeah so if anybody does see a, a you know a tree bed right marty it's not a tree pit right <laughs> it's a tree <laughs> bed we have to train you people um you know if you see a tree bed that's either empty or has a stump in it then you know report that um because that'll get in the record then and then it can get replaced and i sheena i'm not sure but i have this vague memory and marty might even remember too but that when a tree is you know removed or it's chopped off, I think those get replaced on a different cycle than new trees. But I'm not a, I mean, okay, good. I, so I'm not having a senior moment. Okay, it's, yeah. So do report it. And if you see it, that there's a stump in there, note that there's a stump, because that way I think it gets replaced faster than a new tree would. So, okay. It's part of our job, part of your job as a parks committee member, so. Thanks, Mark. Um, tree huggers. Uh, I think Reshma, I think you may have had your hand up first. Yes. So um, as this is going back to how often it's updated. So the tree map is updated every week for those trees that are managed by the city parks forestry team. This is on their website. And on late in late 2022, they had fully updated the map based on the inspections that were done and work orders. But the last time they actually had a tree count was they, in 2015, they did a tree census in New York City. So that's just some background since that question came up. And then on the stumps, on my block on 43rd and 2nd, there's actually several tree stumps. And that happened because we had several bad rainstorms in the last couple of years. And the trees were kind of tilting over or falling and then there was local law 11 work happening and they were putting up scaffolding. So those trees actually got cut down because of that. So I imagine those kind of issues happen in other parts of the city too. Yeah, I know that that's something that Mark had mentioned very early on when we were talking about possibly looking at trees and then um, with the, um, the climate plan. And um, yeah. that, was, that was something that caring for the trees that we already have before just adding more trees, if we're not going to take care of the, the new trees or we can't take care of the old trees and then we'll add new trees and then we're not caring for them. So I think it's, um, yeah, I think it's imperative that we would also care for the trees that we already have. You said 42nd and 2nd? Uh, 43rd and 2nd, my corner. Okay. Yeah. All right. Where and the Remy Coffee where, where the... Where that coffee shop is, the Remy Coffee Shop. Yeah. Oh. Okay, 40, okay. Ann? Um, yeah, one of the questions I had is that there are some tree beds that are parks, but I, I think there are some also that are, um, they're like the, the POPs equivalent. 
of trees, right? Like, so kind of the building that they are connected to is responsible for managing them. Um, and I'm not, I'm just not quite sure how those are accounted for on, on, uh, on the map. And especially if we're kind of looking like, I think, um, you know, council member Rivera is looking for people to kind of take ownership, which is great, but we don't want to encourage, I think, ownership of things that are already supposed to be being taken care of by a private property. So Mark, I see you nodding a lot. So if you can like make whatever I'm saying more coherent and I don't know, Shana, if you can, um, if you know what I'm talking about, if you can weigh in on that. Um, so you're partially right in, in the sense parks is responsible for all city trees on city property, right? Um, but there is some um, different circumstances. Um, if it's a danger hazard, parks will address it and um, build the owner of the property um, for any, you know, damages and so forth. But if it's something that's general, then the parks won't address it. They'll just, you know, send a letter or, you know, um, have the owner of the property take care of it. But um, that wouldn't show up on, those, those that, wouldn't show up on the map then. I, I'm, I'm not quite sure because that, this, the map, yeah. it's a little, it's new to us. Right, right. So we we don't know what they might do it probably later on. I'm not quite sure. That's some information that I don't get unless we inquire. And it's not something that they funnel down to us unless we just, you know, we, we send an email or we talk to someone at forestry unit and then they talk to someone in their unit and it goes on and on. But the, that's the general sense of, of it all. So just know that all city trees belong to the parks department. Right. But there is some circumstances where if it's um, on private property or it's, you know, if it's a hazard, the city will take take care of it and, you know, build the other party for it. Mark? Yeah, I mean, that just to go, oh, let me get rid of my hand, sorry. Um, so the pops are all privately owned, obviously. Um, and the trees and all that stuff is enforced by city planning instead of parks forestry. There's a weird division because it's a privately owned space. Parks, you know, forestry can't do anything unless, like Sheena said, it's a hazard. And there have been a few of those. Um, but when it's in a POPs, it's private property. And it goes through the whole agreement they have with city planning. So it's a separate thing. And I think, Sheena, I, in the past, parks has reached out to the people that have a POPs when there's an issue. But you know the enforcement isn't by parks; it's by city planning, which is a whole other issue. You know, in, in land use in the POP study. So, I just also wanted to say that um, I can't remember how many years ago, but Claude actually had done a tree count. I remember him walking up First Avenue and Second Avenue and all over. And it should be in the office somewhere too, but it's probably now outdated compared to what Parks has on the website. But we have the history of CB6 doing it before anybody else did it. So. Hey Zeus, is there any any chance that we can see if the office still has that? Um, I'm not familiar with it. Mm -hmm. uh, we could maybe stuck in some box somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Would you happen to know what year this might have been? It's before COVID. It's probably six years ago. It'd be seven. It'd be longer. Okay, um, and it was before I, I got here. Yeah, it was. A, yeah, before you. You were just a glim in our eye then. Yeah, um, we can always ask Claude too if he's got it somewhere. Which he probably does, but. He went out and actually walked himself, and a few more of us did the same thing. We we did our own tree survey. Yeah, we can look, around, but it may be worth, given that it was that long ago, it may be worth trying to do it again. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah, because it didn't take that long to do. It was just you know, I mean, Claude did the lion's share of it, but everyone else kind of said, "Well, I'll do my blocks," you know, that kind of thing. Or I'm walking to work, I'll do it. And I walk to work. So um, uh, this is just something from uh, Q and A from the public. Just to ask the committee, does any is there anyone on the committee that uh, actually takes care of a local tree? Well, 
We'll take that as no. No one yeah. is taking care of. Okay. Yeah. Because um, from the Q&A, this is from um, Robert Sorit. And uh, I know that he is involved with uh, the friends of uh, Ralph Bunch Park. And he did know um, that he has seen a lot of trees. I believe it may have been on uh, 3rd Avenue or in the Gramercy area, area where there have been new trees planted. But then within a year, uh, they're dead or they're, um, you know, they're just not being properly taken care of. So he did have um, suggestions of how trees can be cared for, and especially in a way that is uh, environmentally friendly. So I'm hoping to um, the committee that we can connect with uh, Robert uh, Moore just to hear about what some of his uh, suggestions are for tree care. Um, let's see. And I also see uh, this is from uh, the Q&A as well. Um, Courtney Michelle, she has noted that on the west side of First Avenue between 37th and 38th, that there are trees that have died or been removed, and that this would be a great place to get them replaced. So um, I don't live too far from there. I've made a note, and so I can go and take a look at that as well. And also, of course, uh, with the public, uh, Courtney, you're um, welcome to reach out to the office. And if you'd like to set a time and you can um, show us around and uh, show us exactly what it is that you, um, some of the trees that have died or been removed. And then the, um, we can look into the opportunity of adding trees. Does anyone else have anything they would like to add? All right, I think we can go on to the next item in the agenda. Okay, composting bins. My understanding is that our district, we are scheduled to get 20. And I just uh, wanted some general ideas of where we believe, uh, where would there be good spots or locations in the district uh, where these composting bins should be placed. Anyone? No? Well, my, my initial thought was that they should be in a residential area. Um, I'm thinking of a place like, I mean, I'm in Stytown, we don't really need them here. Um, and probably larger apartment buildings or complexes don't need them. But if there's areas where there are, you know, smaller apartment buildings clustered, maybe that's the right place for them. Anyone else? Uh, obviously, yeah, I, I definitely think um, that makes sense uh, where, where we could have the most um, residents that actually would have access to that so that they can use them. So the most that we can get out of um, the most usage out of the one composting bin. I think that's optimal. Yes, Ann? Um, yeah, like just to build on that, I, I thought Tudor City, like in that area, um, you know, kind of made sense. Um, I wonder too, actually about Shoot, I can't think of the name of the building on 48th Street, but it's a really big building just west of 3rd. Uh, it's where Carol Rinsler lives. Buchanan. The Buchanan. That that, that, that might also be a, a good location. I'm trying to think about like spacing it um, kind of throughout the district. Um, and I'm wondering, um, Letty, if you have a suggestion of someplace kind of toward the north and if like one of the, you know, if there are buildings around on Sutton that might be amenable. I, th I think, and that's a good idea. Um, as a matter of fact, the, um, president of the board of the uh, Sutton Place Parks Conservancy is interested in composting. And I know that Neil is going to be speaking to her. So that areas, so he should have an answer on that this week. Can you hear me? 
Yep. I heard that. And that okay. sounds great. So okay. Neil, if you can, if you can like make a note of that for the conversation, that sounds great. Because she is interested. I know she's interested. And I know that Neil probably has that already on his list. So, but thank you, Anne. Marty? A few years ago, and with COVID, time kind of uh, disappeared. We had voted for a compost to be developed at the corner of First Avenue and 20th Street uh, across from the, you know, on that island that's opposite the, uh, it was an Italian restaurant. I don't, I don't know what, what's on the corner now. I haven't been, been there. But we Rose had voted Mary's. to, yeah, Rose, by Rosemary, right. But we had voted for the, uh, for that area to be a small compost because they were closing a compost um at a private gar at one of the public gardens, uh, uh, I guess it never happened. <laughs> it, no, there were some issues. Solar One was what was somewhat involved in it as well, but I guess I guess that that didn't emerge. Age. Um, I think we would be very cautious on suggesting private buildings, especially co-ops and condos, that would have to go through a board. You couldn't just say, put them there. You'd have to have permission to put them in a private building. Did you hear me? Hello? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. <clears throat> Anyone else? I, I would just note, um, I know with um, the, the friends of uh, Ralph Bunch Park, um, I've spoken to uh, Elisa DeVito and I went and I checked out the park with her. And uh, apparently we have a neighbor who is um, very, very uh, concerned and interested with uh, composting. And so he has uh, gone ahead and he is, um, you know, participating in composting and uh, a part of Ralph Bunch Park. And it appears that um, the rats are very, very happy <laughs> the, that the uh, composting is going on there. So the idea of perhaps having something, I know, and Paige said when you're um, dealing with uh, private property and then you have to have co-op boards and sign off, but perhaps if there were something uh, at Tudor City or near Tudor City um, that doesn't or yeah, I guess near Tudor City that would not be within the, the private property uh, piece, but um, maybe that would be good because uh, it would stop individuals from using um, parts of uh, Ralph Bunch Park for composting. And I'm sure it would probably make the, the lives of um, the members of the parks team much easier. The end of 56th Street, 57th Street, before the entrance to the uh, Sutton Parks. Uh, I don't see, you know, th this would be on the street. I don't see any reason why that would not, those would not be possibilities. You said uh, 57 and 58? 57, 56, 57, 58th. The, the, it, it, they're dead end. The, the streets are dead end. And uh, while 50, the 57th Street tends to be a, a FedEx uh, delivery sp uh, spot, <laughs> you know, e every afternoon they, there's trucks and, and all everybody's uh, FedEx and Amazon items are strewn around the street as the delivery guys are picking up for, for their particular buildings. Uh, it, it's quite a sight, but there's nonetheless plenty of space to... Uh, <laughs> Put a, uh, a canister. Anne? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, going to the issue around the rats, I actually, like, I have a little backspace and I've been composting here for, like, literally decades. Never have a rat problem because I don't put out, like, meat and fat things. And so I think there, there does really need to be some education about what can go in the compost. Um, bins. And the other thing that I'm 
um, thinking about is as we're thinking about locations is so like at Doug Harmershall at the green market, um, they have gone back to collecting compost um, materials on like Wednesdays when the green market is there. So, you know, maybe that's something we also want to think about as we recommend locations that we're complementing that. But I, I think the point about like the rats, like if you, but if you leave veggies, it, like I, we never have rat problems. Like it's really about what you put out there. So, um, but I do think the education is an important part that we should not neglect in this. Okay. Um, anyone else would like to add to composting discussion? Okay. So moving on. So one second. Okay, this would now be our report from Parks. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hello. All right, so not really much change. Um, we're going to, we are scheduled to open um, the new Tudor Playground on Thursday, um, Tudor Grove Playground. Not to the city, to the Grove um, on Thursday. Between Thursday and Friday, I'm rooting for Thursday. Um, I just want to go in there and spruce up a few things before we just open it back up to the public. But And then we're going to start Mario. All right, so we're moving in the direction of closing Mario. Um, so we're going to open up one and close down the other. All right, and that's going to happen this week. Um, um, albinos, um, we're close to selecting our winner to a bit of... Uh, um, someone to bid on it. So we're really close to that for Albino, Vincent Albino Playground. Um, the DAG project still um, is still um, is still out. It should be, it's put out for bid shortly. Um, it's still on a legal review. So we're still waiting for, for the DAG um, project to, to, to begin again, I should say. Um, the work still is being done at um, Bellevue um, South. It's looking good. Hopefully it'll be, you know, coming close to reopening, but it's looking good. The last time I was there um, early this earlier this week. Um, Murphy's Brothers is still closed down and it's, and it's moving. Um, and if, I mean, we're going to invite you all to Honey Locust for April 13th for the opening. Um, it's still, it's going to happen. Um, so we hope that everyone will be, some people can attend. I know it's not in um, in District 6, but it's really close to District 6. I'll, I'll um, be there as long as it we don't get snowed out again. <laughs> I know, right? Let's hope. Let's hope not. This weather is, is is a little shaky right about now, and that's about all we have. I have. What time on the on the thirteenth? So the last time it was scheduled. Hold on, hold on. It was one o'clock. I hope they didn't change it. Okay. Let me, I'm going right. I'm going right to it right now, and I'm at my desk. I'm at my desk. It's at 11 now. It's from okay. 11 to 12. 11 Thank to 12. you. Okay. Thank you. They changed it. And then um, you said uh, the Tudor Grove Playground. Yes. When is the, which day will you be there? No, we're going to open it. We open, we, we're going for Thursday. Okay. Yeah. We're going well, for Thursday. You don't have a time? I would just oh, say. Oh, when we open in. up all of the parks. <laughs> It'll open like when we open up all the box. Okay, yeah, I, I was there's um, a ribbon cutting for that. No, we there's no ribbon cutting um set for that as of yet. We're probably gonna wait to to, to the summer. Okay. You know, it gets a little warmer and no snow. <laughs> Sounds good. Does anyone have any questions? Sheena, did Steve send around the invitation for honey locust? Because I, I know he sent around the first one. Uh, I don't um, know. So he was a little. He was a little. Um, um, sick for the last couple of weeks, you know. So he's just getting back, and he's probably going to do so. And I'll just I'll I'll, I'll send him a, a text message. Thank you, 
Gina, um, just because we have a question, where is Tudor Grove exactly? Well, is if you if you if you go to Ralph Bunch, if you want to get a quicker way to, to go, it's several ways. If you go to Ralph Bunch and you walk up the stairs, it's right next to to the to the city, which it's is private 42nd. property, Forty Second Street. Yes, but yes. I was just trying to give you a shortcut. If you want to, if you go to Ralph Bunch, you walk up the steps, and you walk across the street, you'll see to the city, and if you walk further down to Forty Second, it's to the Grove. And then while doing that, I think, like Shana said, you can have a look at Ralph Bunch and uh, Tudor Grove as well. So you can take a look at two of our parks. Um, let's see. We have a question um, from the, the public about the renovation of the um, Asher Levy Recreation Center. Do we know how long that's expected to take? The renovation of the Asher Levy Rec Center? Yes. Um, I have no knowledge. I didn't even know it was going under renovation. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll see if we... I'll ask. I'm here with someone right now. Okay. I'll, I'm going to text them right now. Yeah, I, I didn't. So I went and um, I uh, spoke to um, someone, the person, uh, the gentleman who runs the center. I went there about three weeks ago. I didn't hear anything about renovation either. So let me just keep just keep going down. So we're just waiting a second. It looks like Sheena is asking someone. Okay, just a fitness room. I just got the just got the word. Just a fitness room, not the whole building. So they redoing the fitness room. And um, there's no renovation for either swimming pool, indoor, or the outdoor pool? Nothing. No, no. So far, no, nothing. Okay. Did um, that person say how long the fitness renovation will take? You're, you're muted, Gina. Yeah, yeah I, I'm asking her. She's in the other room. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, because it looks like some members of the uh, of the rec center were taken by surprise as well. Oh. Okay, uh, uh, approximately four to six weeks, but don't, but, but, this it could be a little longer, but approximately four to six weeks. Okay. And I, I would just note that really wouldn't um, interfere, except with uh, any of the members who are using the equipment, but. The equipment is so when you uh, first walk in to the rec center to the right, there's the desk where um, people who are working there where they sit. And then to the left, all the way in the back, that is um, the, the fitness center where they have different uh, equipment. So everything else could still be used. Um, billiards. Um, I think it's like uh, what um, yeah. table hockey or and um, there's still direct access to the swimming pool oh, indoor and outdoor. Correct. Yeah. Well, indoor, indoor pool. Yeah, indoor is uh, directly in front, and then outdoor, and you go all the way back, and then to the right. Um, let's just see. Um, a question on Stuyvesant Square. I'm just going to say uh, Stuyvesant Square East. We're looking for signs and wood chips, and we're just wondering if there was a possible update there. The, um. The signs um, they're going to install soon. The wood chips, um, Mark was working on that, and I have no idea on the delivery of that. I have to reach out to him to see when he scheduled it to um, to be dropped off. But the signs, I I personally want to take tomorrow. I just I just got the signs in my possession earlier today. And. Is there is there any way just looking at some other questions here? Um, is there any way that we can ask when the renovation started for the uh, the fitness center at, at um, Asher Levy Rec Center? Um, I can ask them. I don't even know if it started as of yet. I'm I'm just wondering because someone uh, from the public said that the lobby is currently closed. Um. 
I don't know. I have to ask. I will ask. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. I'm in the same in same area as the person in the recreation. Hold on. Uh, yeah, uh, so the lobby isn't closed. You can still get in through the lobby. You can okay. still go in to the okay. lobby. It's not closed. Okay. And I, I also see just uh, with uh, the public, there are, let me see. So there are a lot of questions about the rec center. So if you could just reach out to the office and then they can put me um, in contact with you just because there are a bunch of questions and then we can start going through all of these uh, one by one. Um, just because of uh, of time. Okay, Sheena, and then I'll reach out to you if there's anything that I would need, but um, I'll find out exactly. Well, I'll, say, I'll, I'll, send, I'll, I'll send you the email address to um, to um, Ken Conyers, and he can okay. be able to, to give you the exact, um, you know, question, answers to your questions that they have. Okay, um, perfect. All right, so they'll contact me and then we'll work together. Right, I'll and, send them. Uh, um, okay. I'll, I'll send you Ken Conyers' um, number and me um, email address. And um, and then you can just shoot him the, the questions and he sh he'll respond back. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I I think that should be it. I think we should be okay. We're, uh, we're at 810 now. So I think I think that's it. Is there any, um, anything else that anyone else would like to add? Anne? Uh, it's not about this. It's kind of an older new business. So I don't know if you want to do your report first and then I can come back yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Just follow. Let's see. Okay. No one has any. I mean, it's, it's kind of a parks question. So I don't know if we want to let Shanna go, but it's not a rush either. Well, I'm sure Sheena is uh, ready to go, but um, if you just if you want to ask, then we can just see if it's something that's applicable. I'm here. No, Sheena, go home. And if, like I said, an older new business, and we can, if 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 we want to email, you want to email me? Yeah, maybe. Or like we'll see what Neil wants to do. That's fine. But you you just uh, want to say it just so we have it. I have so a note of it if it's something that so, we want to look into. At the land use meeting um, last week, I think it was, and I think it was Claire, but I don't remember exactly, um, brought up the issue of there's a park that is inaccessible to like humans um, that's above the tunnel access to, for like the Midtown Tunnel. Um, but there's like no reason human beings can't, can't use it. And so, you know, I know that we are looking for inaccessible, we're looking to identify inaccessible open space uh, and figure out if there's anything we can do to make it accessible. And this seemed to be um, like, a, like a location that should be in our radar. And like, there's no reason, like, there's no reason that, like, I understand why they don't want cars driving in there, but there's no reason a human being can't, can't be in there. And a dog. There, 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 there is a reason. For one thing, it's, it's DOT property. Oh, you're talking reason, about, oh, I, know oh, I thought talking that about. was Parks property. No, no it's that's D, not. It's that's DOT, not it's DOT property. property and no, that's it, interesting, it, Marty, because and has, actually... And, has, and, and we looked at it many times. There's a lot of rats. There's a, there's a, a, And they consistently put in um, uh, rat poison. And it, it's, it, would be, it would be dangerous for children, animals, and the DOT doesn't want people there. Well, at land use, I'm not sure. Frankly, I'm not sure that's a good enough reason. And at land use, I thought somebody from DOT said it was parks. No, that that uh, it, are you talking about the property across from St. Martin's? That's what this looks like. I'm, 
if I'm not mistaken. That's like over north, the entrance. North of St. Barnes. Yeah. Okay, yes. yes. That's and not were, our and, property. It's actually not even DOTs. I believe this is MTAs. You know, property. and they were you saying they, 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 they were 36 and 37. Yes, yes. That's not right? Park's property. They were saying it was a security issue. issue and yes. Maybe they were referring to rats, but they were implying that it was like, oh, somebody's going to go in there and, you know, blow up the the tunnel. Like they're going to carry a backpack in and blow up the tunnel, which is, you know, the same rationale that the UN is using to keep people out of the gardens. You yeah, know, but that's an MTA. That's not years. DOT. That's well, a M- that's MTA. All right. So well, just I'm just ask- saying if we are looking for space that you know we can open up, this should be on our radar. Okay. Um, All due respect, will- Marty. Okay, I'll ask Marty. This will be the last comment. Go ahead, Marty. You got it. No, that's it. Okay. All right. Uh, so Sheena, I now believe you are free to go. Okay, I sent you the email. Um, got I, it. I text it. Yep, got it right here. Thank you okay. so much. Okay. All right. Have All right. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Shana. See you. Good night. All right. Uh, chair's report. Um, I just uh, we have a guest here this evening, um, John Keller, who is the chair of the Youth and Education Committee. There is something that we have been working on. Um, the committee. Um, our committee, Parks Committee, and uh, that is the possibility of closing 15th Street, and that is because of needles that have been found at Stuyvesant Square East, and we thought that it was a good idea to look into the possibility of closing 15th Street um, between First and Pearlman with the idea that students would be able to play in 15th Street as opposed to playing in Stuyvesant Square East where there's the danger of um, needles. And so uh, John Keller has um, experience in working to close streets. And so I thought it would be a good idea that he could come in and join us. John, it's all Most yours. Most of my experience in working to close streets is unsuccessful, but I, because it's very difficult to do it. Uh, let me just, I'll be very brief because you're, you're running late. The best way to move on this, if you know, in a school is to go to the PA of the school and get the engagement of the uh, of the parents in the school and get their concern. I'm going to drop into the chat um, while I was waiting. I found the uh, links to the PA websites at two of the two of the three schools in that building. But th- that's the that's the only way you really get traction. On, uh, on on something like this, and uh, you know, um, I'll just stop there and, uh, and and take any questions that people might have. But it's extremely difficult to get a street closed uh, around the school. We've we've tried numerous times and been unsuccessful. Does anyone have any questions for John? I'll just drop this information in the chat so you can get on with uh, with your meeting. And thank you. And we're happy to work with you in any way we can on this. Thanks. Thanks so much, John. Um, Jesus, I see uh, community board member Kevin O'Keefe has his hand up. Uh, yes. Are you granting him the floor? Yes. Okay. Kevin, you have a question? Kevin, I, I believe you're muted. Yeah, that was up from earlier. Um, I was on Carlina's uh, tree seminar and just wanted to make sure you've got the information. There's a secondary site where you can check on updates on trees, not just the tree map, but more real-time information. And I left that link in Q&A if anybody cares to uh, look at that. Yeah, we uh, the tree work hub. Yeah, I'm looking at that now. So that was also one of the um, one of the sites that we um, we had a look at. The we um, street stump uh, street street tree stump removal sidewalk inspection. So, but um, 
yeah, Kevin, thanks so much for sharing that. It's a, yeah, I know you were asking about it earlier. Resource. Sorry, I've been I've actually been on both on both meetings at the same time. Thanks. Oh, no worries. That's um, that's that's all that I pretty much have for the chair's report. So I think um, I think that's pretty much I should be it. old and new business. I don't really have anything there. We just uh, we continue working on the possibility of closing uh, 15th Street, um, working with youth and education, and then possibly depending on how far along this goes, we would obviously work with the depart um, with um, transportation committee but um i think that is it it's 8 19 uh is everyone ready to go everyone can put their hands up right <laughs> at the same time okay we have a motion to adjourn oh i don't uh, jesus i don't, don't even need one right <laughs> you don't need a motion to adjourn all right everyone can go home happy holidays <laughs> Thank Bye you. everyone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye. 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 Bye.